I don't think it's going to be news to most of you that the unemployment rate in the US during the worst parts of this unprecedented pandemic was as high as it has been in decades. Jobs have been cut across most industries, with service industries being hit the hardest. Indeed, workers in frontline hospitality jobs had unemployment rates approaching 40%. Across all industries, more people have filed unemployment claims than at any time in recent history. And yet, if we zoom in a bit on the last 12 months, thankfully, much of the jobs that were lost did return with time. We're not back to the very low unemployment levels before the pandemic, but it is very clear that at least from the perspective of jobs in the economy, things have improved since the worst of it back in March and April. But that recovery did not happen equally for everyone, not by a long shot. Much like is often the case, when we only look at aggregate data like this, we lose the detail that tells a more complete story. Welcome to Data Demystified, I'm Jeff Gallick, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how unequal this recovery has been with an emphasis on racial inequality. In short, black Americans are seeing a much slower recovery than white Americans. Now, this is just one of a myriad of examples of racial inequality that exists in our nation, and unless curbed, we'll just expand the inequalities that already exist. In a previous video, I focused on racial wealth inequality, or how the median wealth of black Americans is a staggering eight times smaller than that of white Americans, and how this difference is actually growing over time. And yet, that's just one example of many. Black Americans employed at full-time jobs earn 22% less than white Americans. Black Americans who hold bachelor's degrees earn 27% less than white Americans with similar degrees. And central to this video, black unemployment has always been higher than white unemployment. Going back before the pandemic, all the way to 1972, the earliest the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics reports unemployment by race, the unemployment rate for black Americans has always been somewhere between 2 and 12 percentage points higher than the unemployment rate for white Americans. And what's even more striking is that the difference between black and white unemployment rates grows as overall unemployment grows. In other words, when the economy suffers, it almost always leads to more job loss for black Americans compared to white Americans. So perhaps it should be no surprise that this time, during the COVID-19 pandemic, things aren't all that different. Let's zoom in to the last 18 months or so and see how things unfolded. First, it is worth pointing out that unemployment for both black and white Americans was at record lows just before the pandemic. The unemployment rate overall was in the mid-threes, the white unemployment rate was in the low threes, and the black unemployment rate was just around 6%. So going into the pandemic, overall unemployment was quite low, but it is still noteworthy that even in those strong economic times, black Americans were unemployed at a rate nearly twice that of white Americans. Anyway, as the pandemic hit and jobs were hemorrhaging, the overall unemployment rate ballooned to nearly 15% with white unemployment going up to 14.2% and black unemployment going up to 16.7%. And in fact, despite the overall bad news, this was actually good news for inequality in that the absolute difference between black and white unemployment stayed pretty flat. Before the pandemic, the difference was about three percentage points and at its peak, it stayed right around 3%. In other words, even though millions of jobs were lost, the rate of job loss didn't vary by race. And yet, as we move forward a few months and jobs begin to return, that story changes dramatically. Through November, the overall unemployment rate went down from that 15 or so percent to 6.7 percent, an amazing recovery to be sure. And yet the recovery didn't happen equally for everyone. White unemployment rates went down to 5.9 percent, or a reduction of 8.3 percentage points, while black unemployment only went down by 6.4 percentage points. That might not seem like a big difference, but it's actually huge. There are about 20 million black individuals in the civilian labor force in the United States. If black unemployment went down as much as white unemployment did, there would be nearly 400,000 more employed black Americans. Those are real people with real families and no jobs. The economic recovery that has been ongoing, and hopefully will continue, has been dramatic, and yet it has been unequal. Black Americans are not seeing the same recovery in job prospects that white Americans are. Just as we saw in this chart, when times are bad, inequality grows. This pandemic has proven no different. This is yet another example of racial economic inequality. And of course, this is only one part of the disparity in life in general for black and white Americans during the COVID-19 pandemic. According to the Center for Economic Policy Research, black Americans disproportionately work in jobs that put them in direct contact with others, increasing their chances of contracting the virus. According to the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics, black workers are less likely to have paid sick days and are less likely to be able to work from home, again, exposing them to the virus more. And most dramatically, According to the CDC, black Americans disproportionately experience more death if they contract the virus. 
This is all to say that even as we now are on the cusp of mass vaccination and a recovering economy, there's a grim difference in how quickly that recovery is likely to happen depending on the color of your skin. Now, I know this isn't exactly an uplifting message, and I wish I could end this video by saying something like, and all we have to do to fix this is... but I can't. This difference in unemployment rates as the economy recovers is just another stark reminder of the systemic racism that exists in our country, and that can only be rooted out with changes to the systems that we have all become used to. Those systems work for some Americans, but sadly, not for all of them. Finally, I know this is a controversial topic, and yet the point of this channel is to help you understand the data that help explain our world. Sometimes those data don't make you feel comfortable, and that's just the reality of it. The alternative, at least in this case, is to remain ignorant and allow inequality and injustice to exist next door to you. I hope you found this interesting, and as always, thanks so much for watching.